Hello, my name is Max Drake. I want to show you a demonstration of um, how to display asset conditions on a map and why it can be of value to you. Um, I come from an architectural background um, and in design we tend to look at visual um, things more than um, the facilities management, asset managers. They tend to look at data. Um, I've had some experiences in the past where you give people visuals, visuals are very good at seeing patterns that you don't actually see with just straight data. Uh, um, so it's an area that I've been quite interested in actually developing, which is actually looking at assets and looking at ways to actually visualize what's actually happening those, with those assets. When you're managing assets, you're actually building the assets from you and you actually have your construction period, then you actually look over, look, look after those assets through their life. Now you actually want to actually extend the life of those assets for as long as you want, because then you actually have value for them. Um, so one way of doing that is to have a forward view of what's actually going to happen to those things. So this is a way of actually expressing those ideas and actually doing it to show a few different ideas off as well. This one's actually only on three particular buildings. It's actually um, got the screen of the map itself and the map comes out and the map goes in and you can go into the satellite view or the terrain view and see the terrain with simple elements or a lot of these are bottom left hand point is actually hovering over the center of the um, asset at this point in time it's the house on the right hand side here you actually got um, the legend which is actually showing the different condition statuses so condition one is very very good it's with it's it's 50 percent of its life so it's in that um, bound so that's fine in the red area um, that's saying I've only got one three years of my life left um, there's two rows of assets. Um, uh, there's the element side, which is to the left hand side. So those are the actual physical elements of the doors, the windows, the walls and the roofs with different symbols. Triangle for the roof, walls are square, windows are circle and doors are di diamond. Uh, on the right hand side, the second level of symbols, if they are there, in this case, I've actually got data on the finishes for the walls and I've got data on the finishes for the doors. I haven't for the windows or the roof. And uh, these ones would be the finishes like paint finish. So obviously the actual elements themselves are going to last a lot longer than the actual finishes themselves. Um, the finishes are going to be a paint finish, uh, most probably, and that's going to um, fade over time. So you can actually replace that in a lot more frequent um, stages like 10 to 15 years for a paint finish. Whereas the doors, if they're sheltered and the windows are reasonably sheltered with eaves and stuff and they're not open in exposed places, good for 40, 50, 60 years. Roofs, again, tin roofs are usually good for 30 years in New Zealand, mainly because uh, there's nowhere in New Zealand that's further away from the sea than 90 kilometers. So a lot of uh, aggressive environment from the point of view of salt. Um, so that suffers on the roof since it's flat, generally flat or low inclined surfaces. Um, uh, down the bottom here, I've got two um, points that have been done. One we actually extracted out of an information data system where this information was gathered from. And it starts looking at um, uh, maintenance over time. So what maintenance is actually going to be required on these buildings? And this is just a, a present day value of sort of upcoming costs on different elements. This is just displayed in numbers overall. The actual elements would actually be in the database as to what these peaks and troughs actually relate to, as to which elements either need failing or need replacing or um, need preventative maintenance, something like painting. Um, on the graph on the left hand side, um, the little purple line is this uh, is the right hand graph. It's very, very small over an increment over time. And the blue line is just that compounded over time. So it's all added together. And you see over time, um, you're doing an awful lot of spending an awful lot of money on maintenance. Uh, the green line along here is the actual land value of the property. And the red line is the improvement. So that's the building on the property. So that's what it is actually worth at this point. And so they use that worth to actually um, allow for rates. Um, so that's is actually a government rating valuation. So it's just an indication. And what that says is at this point here, where the blue line crosses the red, the cost of actual um, from now until 
um, at this point here in 2056, 2060, um, there's a crossover point. That means you've you spent that much, you, you've spent the equivalent of the replacement value uh, of that property um, buy it. So at that point in time, do you still de end up spending lots of small amounts or larger amounts of um, uh, on maintenance, or do you actually just replace the building, or do you sell the land and the building and go and find something else and, and, and do that? Um, so it's just really a heads up on costs overall. The other thing that we can do is that we actually have our condition of their property now. Now, what's that going to look in five years' time? It's actually saying that the doors are actually changing. They're going to be in the 33 to 50% area. And uh, the paint on the door has actually gone to condition four. So it's actually going to need to be um, uh, replaced very soon or repainted. So there needs to be some work. So you can see that cost coming up. Now, we didn't actually have any data on the windows. But in fact, you would most probably have to do the doors and the windows. Here's another bit of power inside um, using the maps. Ah, now, one thing which I actually want to make a point of here is that we're using the map, which is Google Maps. So we're just calling that over the Internet and we get the underlay of the map coming up. And we actually have the map as um, uh, just a terrain map or, a sat or we have the satellite map. And we overlay our data onto it. This is actually a JSON file that I'm actually using here. So this is actually stored on my computer on the server and it overlays that information on top of the map. So we're controlling that data. So if you actually only want to give it to people within your organization, you would have that on your server. It wouldn't be going out. It's not public information. It's actually totally private information. So therefore, you control who actually um, has that information. Um, we had to pre-process this information to actually get it into this state. And uh, I have a couple of blogs that talk about that, and I'll put them down in the um, information section um, of this video that you can follow that up later if you're interested. Um, and on this one, so again, we can look at 20 years, suddenly in 20 years time, a lot of things are starting to get into condition four or maybe condition five. So the roof looks as if it needs to be doing. Um, maybe the weatherboards need a bit of wear or something like that. They definitely need a good inspection and maybe a bit of a repair. And at the same time, you'd most probably do a paint. This has actually come to the painting on the door. So most probably the windows, uh, the doors and the walls all need painting and stuff. So you know that in 30, 20 years time, there's going to be some major money being spent on two of these houses and then some on the roofing. So you'd most probably do a contract or plan to do a contract in maybe 25 years for replacing all those roofs. So that's something you budget for in the future. And maybe for the walls, repainting the walls. You can see this one's actually gone back to blue. Now, if we go to 10 years, you can see that's green. So what's actually done between 10 and 20 years, it's actually gone through condition um, two, three, four, five, and it's actually gone back to condition one. So what that's saying is that sometime between 10 and 20 years, that um, weatherboard should have been um, painted. In fact, you'd most probably push it out a little bit more and try and do them all in the same time. So maybe you do these in uh, um, 18 years, and at that point in time, you can do all three buildings. But you have an overview. If there's another 50 buildings around as well, you could see if there's a cluster that you could group together to do something. And then in 30 years, you can actually see here the doors have been replaced, the windows need replacing, this one the doors need replacing, and other ones. So again, bigger icons as they start to get into the worst conditions to highlight the fact that something needs to happen on these particular points of building. Another powerful thing with uh, using Google um, uh, Maps is that you can actually use a street view. So you can actually get an indication of the buildings. You can get an indication of their location, north, southerlies, um, in, we're in the south, uh, sorry, in the southern hemisphere. So the, the north, the sun is to the north and sets in the west. So on here, it's directly ahead, and then to the left is where the sun comes in. So you don't want shading. Um, so your south side and your west side, sorry, your east side are places where you're going to get mold onto your. Um, uh, buildings. These seem to be very airy, very nicely um, uh, exposed, and they all look in very good condition. So it doesn't look as if you've got a lot of trees close up to the buildings, such that you're going to start getting a lot of mold growth on the south face. If you do, then you've got to think about doing some uh, water blasting or ways of washing down the buildings. 
um, uh, and here's an indication, another one on the buildings here, which this gives you, um, because of health and safety requirements, if you're doing any work on the roof, you actually have to scaffold all the way around up to the roof so that the roof is actually have safe access. Um, again, anything working that you, you'd see here, that although this is only a single level building, you're going to need scaffolding to actually paint this side of the house. So although it's single story building, this is actually telling you not only have you got the expense of the um, uh, uh, painting for that, but you've also got to allow for uh, scaffolding as well for all of those buildings on this particular side, on the south side of all of them, because the north side is most probably only a single level, but then you've got a sort of a semi-basement level for these ones just because of the sloping um, issues of the ground. So you can glean an awful lot of information um, from using Google Maps and actually overlaying the conditions on here. This one here, I've actually done a, a discrete increments, five years, 10 years, I could have done 15 years, 20, 25, 30 years. Or you can actually, I have actually got demos on this particular website showing how you can use sliders um, on a store. I actually haven't developed it any further. Um, this is an example of just three houses. And I've done another example, which I'll do another video on, on um, using a database instead of a JSON file. The power of the database is that you can update your information a lot more quickly and over a larger asset group so that that information is more current. Redoing a JSON file is a little bit tedious, um, but I think it's a very powerful tool to actually use. You don't really get the full idea on a cluster of three buildings, but if you had 50 um, and you're an asset manager looking over a larger site, this is also an example of external um, cladding. You could actually do this for internal buildings, uh, sorry, internal finishes for floors, walls, ceilings on the number of rooms just by having the number of rooms with maybe three things across. You'd have floors, ceilings, um, uh, walls, and then you'd have uh, finishes and then you'd have your number of rooms and do it that way. Or maybe elements such as things. So you could actually overlay different things on that same map, or you'd actually have three maps showing different stuff. And it's very good if you have a large number of assets around, you can actually know when things are coming up and the fact that you can allow for some of the budgeting to allow for those events to actually happen. Because at the end of the day, what you're looking for is the best condition asset or the asset in a fit for purpose state for as long as period as possible so that it has as much value to your organization as possible. If it looks as if it's going to be a lot of maintenance, you can actually decide what you're going to do with it at a specific time so that it doesn't become a burden and a drain on the rest of um, the organization. And maybe you need to look at different assets. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been informative. Thank you. Goodbye.